morning. I uh, hope it's a good morning for you. I hear a couple of birds tweeting out here and it's getting a little bit lighter out. Um, it's good to be here. Thanks for always joining in on these devotions and uh, thanks for any comments you guys have. I, I love to read what kind of conversations we can get going. Uh, got a couple of thoughts today just about the holidays, <laughs> seasons, um, uh, that kind of thing, and, and trying to understand how to, you know, celebrate them and, and explain our holidays a little bit better. But let's start out with a prayer and then uh, we will hop right into it. Let's start out with a prayer. Let us pray. God, thank you for today. Thank you for the warmth of summer and thank you for the coolness of fall and winter. Uh, we ask that we embrace all that your creation gives us, uh, the seasons that are here in the places that we live. Um, we ask that we take care of the trees and the birds around us, uh, that you fill us up with something good to, to go out into the world and do those things. Especially this morning, we ask that you be with us now or throughout the day and to push us out into the world to do your work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I was thinking about um, trick-or-treating the other day on on Halloween and uh, Halloween slash Reformation Day and the idea that, well, we, we didn't have that many trick-or-treaters in our neighborhood, but um, you could see we had our window open just to make sure because our, our doorbell doesn't always work, so I wanted to make sure we didn't miss anybody. Um, so we would watch people walk by or walk near our house and look up at our house and try to decide whether or not that we were handing out candy. Uh, maybe next year we'll just sit on the porch most of the time and or put the bowl out and still try to meet them at the door, but put the bowl out so people know. Uh, but we had left our light on. And in my mind, that's just always been the universal signal of, yes, we are handing out candy on Halloween. You leave your light on on the porch. Um, but it seemed like a couple of people were still hesitant, even even with our light on. They just couldn't quite tell if we, we don't have enough decorations, I guess. We have a couple of pumpkins on the porch, but uh, they couldn't quite tell. And it, a few of them were easing up. And so we tried to come out the door and say, hey, happy Halloween. Come on, get some candy. But uh, but just leaving the light on wasn't wasn't quite enough for them. And it made me think about some of the work that the Reconciling in Christ group is doing at church right now is that, you know, how do people know that we are a, a safe church for them to come and be a part of our community? How do people know that they will be welcomed at our church? There's not quite anything, I guess on the, our church sign, which is kind of hidden by the trees back there, um, up top near the sanctuary, I, I guess it does say all are welcome. So if they read the sign, they might understand, okay, maybe I will be welcome here. Maybe if they look at our website or our Facebook, they'll see a couple of things that we do. They'll listen to some of the sermons and they'll know uh, that we are, are welcoming. But how else would they know, you know, before they walk into the door? And so how can we let people know, just like leaving your light on while you're handing out candy on Halloween, how can we let people know that we are a, a kind and gentle and welcoming church? How can we let people know what we are up to? That was one question I had. And speaking of my light, I guess it is flickering a little bit. So maybe, <laughs> maybe that was one of the problems is that they it, sometimes it was on, sometimes it was off. Who knows? Um, and then the other thought I had was that yesterday at uh, in the LCM lounge, I thought about how maybe it's time to decorate for Christmas. We have a Christmas tree that we put up and put lights on it, some tinsel, some ornaments, that kind of thing. Um, and I know that sounds like blasphemy almost it's november 1 i know that magic 98.9 is already playing christmas music so we're not the only ones out there thinking about christmas but the students go home about a week or a week and a half two weeks after thanksgiving so they don't get to experience what the kind of time that we might put the christmas tree up in the church and um that kind of thing they might see it a couple of times but they don't they don't get the experience decorating the lounge for as long as, as most people might decorate their homes right before Christmas, right? And so I thought, you know, this is almost a month before they go home, maybe we'll go ahead and put the Christmas tree up or we'll ease into it a little bit, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I thought that that kind of cancels out Advent, right? Maybe they'll go home ready for Christmas and then it'll still, still be Advent. But we don't do a lot of teaching around what Advent actually is. What does it mean liturgically in the church? 
Um, why do we celebrate it or why do we observe it before Christmas? It's not just counting down the days of Christmas, but it means something theologically it, to prepare for the birth of Jesus, to prepare for um, Jesus to come into our world, to, to pave the way for Jesus in our own lives, that kind of thing. So if we decorate for Christmas, I want to make sure that we're also intentionally observing Advent still, right? Um, how can we do both of those things at once? And sometimes in the church, maybe we don't always do a great job of explaining what we are doing and why. Why do we face the font during confession? Why do we follow the cross in um, during the gathering hymn and follow it out during the sending hymn? Why do we uh, kneel for communion? Why don't we just walk up, grab our our elements, and then go back to our seats, you know? There are a lot of things that we we don't quite understand, or if we don't understand them, we don't do a good job of explaining them um, to people who might not understand them. And I think that's another way to be a little bit more welcoming. So just a couple of thoughts that I had at the beginning of this week, and uh, I hope maybe y'all have some things to say about that too. Um, how can we be a more welcoming church? How can we better talk about our traditions and those things? Uh, but if you happen upon the LCM Lounge in the next couple of weeks and we have already put the Christmas tree up, don't, uh, you know, yell at us <laughs> that it's too soon, I know. But uh, I just want to be able to enjoy the Christmas decorations with the students before they go home after exams. So we'll see. It's crazy to think that those days are coming up quickly, but it is already November 2nd. So let's pray and then we'll go about our days and um, hopefully we can think about these things throughout our day. Let us pray. God, thank you for the different ways that you welcome us into your arms, that you invite yourself into our lives. Um, fill us up with your grace and your love and your uh, openness so that we can be more welcoming to those around us, more intentionally welcoming, more um, upfront about who we love and, and how we love. Uh, so that all the people around us can um, experience that kind of the same way that we have uh, or maybe even better than we have in the past. Um, help us to be a church that um, is always learning and growing and that always is uh, getting closer to you and closer to one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, y'all. Hope you have a wonderful day and uh, stay warm out there. God bless.